Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us. This is the uh, March installment of our Crystal Reports Tips and Tricks webinar. We put on these webinars once a month. Uh, you can see all our tips and tricks from years and months past by going to blog.marksgroup.net. Uh, we've also started to post our Gold Mine and Crystal Reports webinars on YouTube. So please feel free to go here to youtube.com slash user slash the mark group to see our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you've missed anything in months past, you can always go there and check it out. Okay, today we are looking at uh, another um, seemingly short list. But as we know, when we talk about simple things in crystal, they have a way of getting uh, horrendously complicated. We're going to look at how to give a group a custom name which can really be, uh, come in handy, especially when you're grouping on unique identifiers on the back end of the database. We all know that as crystal reporters, uh, the data on the back end isn't always you know, readable by humans, uh, but we do want that information to be readable by humans on a report. I want to show you um, how to strike a balance between those two things. Uh, we're also going to look at advanced date formatting. This is actually something that I researched for a client, and I was absolutely blown away <clears throat> by how advanced your date formatting can be in crystal it's going to blow your mind and then we're going to spend some time on how to ignore case and that's going to give us a nice refresher on using formulas to evaluate data in a very general way so let's go to the top of the list a custom group name what do i mean well if i just look up this very simple report i see that this report does have a group name and for every group it's going to print the details section. So for every group, we're going to see the company, the contact, state, the create on date, and a couple of key fields. This is actually a gold mine database, so there are what are called key fields. Those are just normal database fields. Um, let's go ahead and just preview the report. Okay, so what's happening here is that my group value, my group name value, actually is the gold mine account now. Now, if you don't have Goldmine, or if you don't know Goldmine, don't worry too much. All I want to do is show you that it's very often that as a Crystal Report writer, you will have to group on these unique identifiers on the back end. Uh, why would we want to do that? Why can't we just group by company? See, what we're doing here is that this identifier is the unique identifier for every company record in the Goldmine database. Now what we can actually do, let's go to our group expert, which is a nice place to be familiar with underneath our report menu, report, change group expert. We can see all of our available groups and we can change them right here. So Justin, how come we're not just grouping on the company name? Because that's kind of what we want. We want a line for every company. Well, let me show you if we do that, if we group on the company field, it seems to be okay. But what you get is that if you have duplicate company names like Acme, you're going to not get these three records distinctly broken out. And certainly if we were reaching out to another table like sales orders or, or client history, then that certainly is going to screw up our, our linking. Um, so uh, if we truly want to separate these companies or group them singly, what we actually have to do is, is use the field that Goldmine is using to, to identify them singly or CRM or, or, or whatever you're using. So we're going to go back into our change group expert, back to our options. Okay, so we saw that grouping that on the company field doesn't make the report act like we want it to. So we're going to switch that back to the account now, which again is the unique identifier in the gold mine database it could actually even be rec id uh, which even looks even scarier so okay great so now the report is acting like we want it to but this is terrible i want to be able to see exactly the company name here so instead of displaying this weird alphanumeric string i want to convert that to the company name there's a couple of different ways to handle this um certainly the easiest way would be to just delete <laughs> this group name field right okay that looks a little more normal and then you can go ahead and insert a database field and just insert the actual company field into your group header right and we'll make that a little bigger and a little bolder oh 
oh, that drives me nuts sometimes, trying to get that to hover right there. Oh, my God. Okay. So now we see... All right, so so again, the report is acting uh, as we want it to. We're getting a line for every company. Every company is being broken into a group. Um, so we can remove that group name header field and just paste in our, our company field from the table. Uh, a better way, actually, we're going to go back here to when we had a group name header. A better way is actually to go into our change group expert go to our options and and not only can we group on this this really weird value but we can customize the group name field which is what I really want to show you and then we can tell what we can tell crystal what field it should return whenever you drop in that group number one name field that is all this is really doing so in our case we want the company so very easily without having to delete and re-add fields we can change the behavior of that group name field and again that was in our group expert we went to the options on our group and we can actually choose from anything in that table I know a lot of people that just use a formula um, but again it's going to be what, what you'd like it to do uh, again why you'd ever want to group by this crazy string is that if you were like linking like a history table that had to be linked on that and then say you wanted to add a couple more group footers here and actually see list of history um, you do you would have to to break the report on that unique identifier so what you're going to find yourself uh, doing is actually leveraging the unique identifiers that your database has already been tracking for you don't reinvent the wheel that change group expert is just the coolest thing ever okay let's talk about formatting dates is a crystal reporter you should absolutely love date fields I know that I do because I know that whenever my database is keeping something in a date format any kind of math is going to be super duper easy I'm going to be able to do things like subtract a date from today to get the number of days that have passed uh, so on and so forth very easily without having to screw around with conversions so let's inspect a normal old date field here this is my create on date in gold mine this just tells me when the record was created anyone who's attended a crystal webinar mine is intimately familiar with this field <clears throat> now the first thing that you can do with a date field is you can right click on it and you can go to format field and right here we're able to pretty extensively control how this date field looks and behaves so uh, I actually have mine set to this 3 slash 1 slash 99 value and that gives me a short year a lot of people like to see a long year perhaps so you can go back into your format field and select that so on and so forth for those of you perhaps running reports out of say call log tables um, you might be interested to see the time precision as a part of that date, which brings up a, a good point. When we think about a date field on the back end of a database, it's not just the day, the month, and the year. It is also the time of day, probably the seconds, and maybe even the milliseconds if it's a SQL server. So you'll see here that our other date formats will include things like the time. I'm actually a big fan of military time. Actually, in, in Goldmine's case, it's not tracking a time precision. That's just a shortcoming of the Goldmine database. But there could be some of you out there that are actually using stuff with a time precision, and that's how you get that stuff in there. Or, uh, conversely, hide the time precision. Maybe you're just not too awfully worried about it. And I thought that was enough. I thought that would be all you'd ever want to do with a date until I had a client ask me, well, Justin, I'm doing a report for a foreign client and I need my date to look like this I need my day no I need my month no, I need my days and then my month and then my year but I but I just don't want like an 01 01 2012 I want 1d and then maybe 2m and then 12 Y. Don't ask me why, but the client wanted the date 
in that weird format. So as a crystal reporter, we have to think about, well, we're getting all the, all the numerical values that comprise that string. They're all there in the date field. How are we going to get them out of that field? So those of you who might be quick to go to a formula could think to yourselves, well, I could use a couple of different crystal formulas and I could cut out like the year because I can use the year function. I can use the year and say my, the year of my create on date is going to return 2012, right? And then I can uh, find my way into like a month function. I'll, I don't think there is a month function, but you kind of get the idea that you can use separate crystal functions to cut values out and then you'd have to, to co combine or concatenate all those values into, into another formula. And of course, that's all entirely possible. I was amazed, and that's actually what I started trying to do. But what I found was that if I go a little deeper in my date formatting, and go to this, <laughs> wow, if I go to this customize button, and then go to my date tab, I can actually change not only the order, which wanted to be day, month, and then year, I can actually control what the separators are, which in, in, the, in the case that I'm talking to you about actually turned out to be enough for the client. So um, when, I, when I think about my date separators, every portion of the date has a prefix or, or and or a suffix. So I can just change this to D because we wanted days first, and then we wanted month second, and then we wanted a suffix to be Y for years. And you can actually see right here. The sample shows you what, what's happening to your date as you modify the format. And there you go. Uh, I'm just thinking that maybe they had some sort of legacy system where they were sorting on this alphanumeric value. I can't imagine why, but at any rate, go into your format field, go to customize, go a little deeper to date. And, I, and, and this other stuff here, I, I couldn't even really tell you what, what a lot of it does. I mean, you can change the month abbreviation ultimately, so Mar instead of March. Change the, uh, the, the leading zero on your day if you want it or not. Four digit or two digit year or no year. So there's a lot of stuff to play with. I, I, know, I realize it's probably not a huge need for you guys, but just to show you that whenever you find yourself, <clears throat> this happens to me all the time, whenever you find yourself thinking that you have to create three or four formulas to, to cut values out of other fields and then combine them all together in something else. Do a little research. You might already have the tools that are that are easier to use to create that. Like in here all I had to do was I just edited literally these three text boxes and in my client who actually turned out to be a crystal reporter himself who was doing it for yet another client was struggling with that it's one of the best kept secrets, that, that ultimate date formatting. If you screw that up, you can always go back to something normal by bringing up the date format and selecting one of these handy dandy items. I'm hoping yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> Ignoring case. I don't see quite as much of this as I used to. Um, back in the day when people still had things like D-based databases and people were buying, buying uh, pardon me, mailing lists with all capital letters, you, you, you'd see this a lot. Um, so let's think about the following problem. I'm going to go into my gold mine database. I'm just going to change a few of these. See, I'm, I'm tracking my industry here, and actually, I'm going to make a couple of these rocket sign. Oops. I'm going to make a couple of these rocket science items lowercase. 